So I'm joined by Lauren Jacobs. Thank you so much um, for agreeing to do this interview. And uh, if you don't mind, could you tell me a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so there's people walking through, sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> moment. Um, so my name is Lauren Jacobs. My pronouns are she, her, and hers. I'm the Youth Programs Coordinator at Magic City Acceptance Center here in Birmingham. Awesome. And so how long have you been with them for? Almost since the beginning. So we've been around since the spring of 2014. We're a project of Birmingham AIDS Outreach. And so we opened initially to provide a safe space for LGBTQ youth in Birmingham and beyond, really, um, those ages 13 to 24. So knowing that there weren't very many physical safe spaces for young people in our community, that was really the impetus as well as the fact that we knew that folks in that age range of 13 to 24 on the highest age range for cases of new HIV infection. And so to have a safe space where we could talk about safer sex, talk about identity, and really let people come together to build community, it was really important to us. Yeah, I think I think that's uh, super important because um, yeah, I I moved here in 2012 from Atlanta and 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 hadn't seen anything like that until hearing about your organization. So I personally want to thank you for for creating that and being a part of it. Um, can you tell me about some of the uh, programs that you have for the community? Um, for those who don't know, like for uh, both youth and adults. Yeah. So. Like I said, we started with youth programs, um, but we quickly grew into a fully fledged community space for both youth and adults. Um, for our young people, when we're physically open, our biggest program is our drop-in hours, and that's twice a week, every single Tuesday and Thursday afternoon, after school, completely free to attend. People can just show up and be a part of our space where they have access to our library and our video games and our movies. Since we're in quarantine, we've moved all of that online. We're using the platform Discord as a safe and secure server for our young people to connect. And we're able to actually host a lot of our workshops there as well. So we're doing self-care workshops with them. Um, we've had a series called Financing COVID for them to learn some financial skills in this time of COVID-19. Mm -hmm. um, and then for our adults, we've brought those workshops and those um, support groups online as well. Okay, so um, in what ways um, do you think the library is and can uh, continue to support the LGBT community in Birmingham. Yeah, I want to say that we love the libraries. Um, as the center, we've had an incredible relationship with a lot of our local libraries because libraries have been foundationally advocates in the community for a really long time. They are a safe space that people can come to and see themselves reflected in the books that are on the shelves and the media that you carry. And so what's been really cool is a lot of our libraries that have reached out and asked you know, what are your young people reading? What do they want to read? Are there books that we could be ordering um, to fill up the catalog and have LGBTQ representation? Um, and we're already doing a great job before even asking us what the young people were interested in. So it's really, really cool to have that as a resource in the community, as well as um, special events that libraries have done um, throughout Pride Month or hosting LGBTQ authors or um, having conversations around LGBTQ topics. It's been really, really lovely to see libraries do that. So we're excited about that continuing. I am too. And um, I think now more than ever, it's, it's a great time for um, the nonprofits in, in Birmingham to come together and work for a better future. Um, okay, so now we're in the personal uh, question section. Um, the first question is, what does pride mean to you? A whole lot is the short answer. Um, the longer answer is, you know, I think for a lot of us in the community, um, in terms of coming out and coming into your own identity, there is a lot of a lot of shame and uncertainty that can be felt for people. So, just the word in itself, reclaiming that idea that you can be proud of who you are, it says everything. And to be able to look back on your community's history, to be able to look back on Stonewall on Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera and to know, you know where pride really, really comes from, to be connected to that and feel a sense of forward progress is really, really important. 
to the first. Um, what does community mean to you and why is it so important? Community um, is really everything for us. We are built for us and say, I've never met another gay person before and I haven't had anybody to talk to. Um, we, it's funny, people walk into our space and they'll inevitably say, I'm excited to be here, but I'm so nervous. Like I've never been in a space like this before. And we get to tell them every single person that's walked into the space has said the exact same thing you haven't been in a space like this before because there hasn't been this big of an LGBTQ youth space in Birmingham before. So it's kind of cool that for them, they get to build this community from the ground up and get to make it about what they want to talk about. We love to be really, really youth led in our programs. And so we only want to do things that they, we only want to host programs that they want to have. Um, so for me, getting to watch them as a youth community is really special. And then for me personally, I feel incredibly lucky to be a member of this community. I have loved learning our history. I've loved getting to build coalitions with people. I've loved that people are surprised that we exist in Birmingham, Alabama, um, so that I can say, yeah, absolutely. We have a history here and a community here that is growing and thriving and really working together. Yeah, I think I think that uh, the Magic City Acceptance Center is truly unique and special and was, you know, desperately needed in Birmingham. And um, I can't tell you how much personally I'm just uh, very thankful uh, for your organization and that, you know, kids out there will, you know, they have a safe space um, to go to and to kind of claim as their own. Um, I think that's really, really important. Um, so kind of a, a, f a fun question, uh, <laughs> reading is fundamental, um, <laughs> which RuPaul has coined, you know, on, dra on Drag Race, probably, you know, history of that term goes way far back than that, but, yes. um, I'm guessing that you agree with this statement. <laughs> <laughs> I do, but you're, yeah, you're right. We got to take it back. So I love like I said, I love learning about our community's history. So if anybody has not seen the documentary Paris is Burning, highly recommend it. It's my favorite movie of all time. Yes. Um, it is about the history of um, the ball scene in Harlem, New York in the late 80s and early 90s. And that's where a lot of our gay slang, our gay terminology comes from black and brown folks that were in that community. So reading is fundamental, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, for anybody who doesn't know, it's free on Netflix, I think, right now. And I mean, it's it's been out since the early 90s. The documentary came out in the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. Also, a really good show based on that is Pose, um, if any of our viewers are interested in checking that out. Um, so a little, as all of these are very personal to you, um, do you have any authors, uh, famous authors or books or films that you found um, particularly aside from Paris is Burning um, highly influential in your own life? Sure I need to I'll say I need to finish reading Janet Mock's Redefining Realness um, so that's on my list to, to read. Um, I just finished a memoir by Tegan and Sarah. Um, wow. They're a band and they're both sisters and they've both been out for a really long time and so they write about their high school experience uh, and kind of coming out. Um, when I was younger I loved a lot of Augustine Burroughs who wrote Running With Scissors um, but there's so many really really cool um, LGBTQ books that are coming out now for youth and young adults but I just want to sit down and read those. <laughs> um, there's really lovely you know, histories of Stonewall. There's a book called um, LGBTQ History for Kids that's been really great, and we have it on our shelf here. Um, there's a book called Kings, Queens, and In-Betweens that I want to read. Um, Juliet Takes a Breath. There's a whole list that I need to get to. I didn't know that Tegan and Sarah uh, have, have a book out. I, um, I used to love them in the early 2000s, like total yes. angst. <laughs> <laughs> so much angst. They're so good. Their book is fantastic. I've been so deliberately reading it really, really slowly so that I don't run out of it. 
so what are the things that bring you joy and how do you pursue them even when life gets stressful? Yeah, um, we've been talking a lot as a community, as everyone has, about you know how to be joyful and mindful when things are hard. And there are a lot of things right now that are hard. Obviously, coronavirus and highly publicized murders of unarmed Black people and of trans people in our community. Um, for me, the things that bring me joy are really, in this moment, taking that time to be mindful and to be able to rest and to be able to connect with others in my community and, and just share space. Honestly, just sharing space means so much. And that's, I mean, that ties into the work that we do at the Acceptance Center. It's very much about creating that space for people to be exactly as they are and know that they're going to be accepted. So for me, it's, it's really that, being able to connect people and also watching cooking videos. I've been watching a lot of Bon Appetit cooking videos <laughs> that they're very joyful. <laughs> yeah, I've personally made a lot of banana bread during quarantine, <laughs> gardening. I'm cheating because I, I haven't made anything. I will just sit and watch hours of other people making things. So it's eventually very peaceful. I'm gonna make something. <laughs> Um, so if you could give your, your younger self, and I'll let you define your younger self, um, advice, uh, what would it be? Oh, I love that question. I was so angsty and I feel like I deserve to be angsty. So I wouldn't tell myself to be any less angsty. There was a time and place. Um, I would tell myself, I would have liked to know the history of the LGBTQ community when I was younger. By the time that I was older and started to learn, it felt like something had kind of been robbed from me that nobody had ever shared this with me before. And in particular, I would have loved to know about Southern LGBTQ community. I would have loved for somebody to say, you know, you don't have to move. You don't have to move to San Francisco. Yeah. There's just as much history in your community here in Birmingham, Alabama, around LGBTQ issues, around civil rights issues, and the intersection of them. Um, that you have to be proud of. I agree. You know, I, I was kind of a transient too and actually moved to San Francisco for a family and came back and have friends still that are like, why are you, you know, I, I grew up in Georgia, but I'm like, there's something to be said about, you know, grassroots history, you know, and the work that needs to be done. And, um, so I totally feel you, and I'm so glad that you're you're here uh, with the Magic City um, Acceptance Center. I keep telling you thank you, but honestly, thank you. Thank you for the work that you're doing. I'm glad you're here, too, and I'm sorry I didn't mean to call you out accidentally about San Francisco. <laughs> oh, no, it's okay. It sucks now, so it's fine. <laughs> totally gentrified, so. Um, <laughs> in what ways would your younger self be proud of who you are today? <laughs> Uh, a sweet I, question. That, I know it's sweet and, and I'll go cry about it after um I think that my younger self would be so excited to know that I'm still here in Birmingham um the fact that I work for an LGBTQ youth center I think would be really really surprising uh I was out to only a small number of friends in high school um I tried to start a GSA at my school and wasn't allowed to i only found community with other people online. It's kind of ironic that we're back to virtual programming and all of that for me, but I did not see this coming. I did not see this coming so quickly that there would be a, an LGBTQ youth space in Birmingham um, that I could work at. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are there any last last like remarks or anything that you, you would like to um, add or anything that for any, I guess, young patrons who might be watching, um, any message that you would like to send? Yeah, I think, like I said before, it is at our core is that word acceptance, right? So you know who you are, you know that you can be proud of who you are, you deserve to be in Birmingham if you wanna be in Birmingham and feel safe and thrive and celebrate pride exactly as you want to. One big message we've been letting people know and, and happy to share is that 
a lot of in-person things are canceled, but it doesn't mean that pride is canceled. It doesn't mean that acceptance is canceled. It doesn't mean that your own resiliency and your own self-care is canceled. So take care of yourself, keep washing your hands, and happy pride. Yay, happy pride. <laughs> well, um, thank you, Lauren. Uh, this has been amazing, and I'm so glad that you accepted my invitation for me to interview you, and um, thank you. For all the work yeah, thanks so much for what you're doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thanks.